welcome to another episode of College Town Talk. I'm Shan Stout. And I'm Jonathan Frank. Jonathan, here's a question for you. How's your financial literacy? Uh, I I would say impeccable, Shan. (laughs) Really? (laughs) That sounds very confident. So what do you know about investment? Well, uh, right now I'm really invested in watching Succession. You know, that's a good show. But um, but also Abbott Elementary. Uh, I've been really invested in Love is Blind lately. I mean, that is that is event television, Shan. <laughs> do you keep up to date on any of the financial news? I think you're missing where we're going here such as the Wall Street Journal, the NBC. You know, lately I've been um, I've been reading more People magazine. Uh, I, I also get a lot of my news on Facebook, <laughs> you know, because because that way, you know, it's always accurate. <laughs> no fake news there. OK, what about 401ks? What do you know about those? Uh, is that like special K? Because I got to tell you, I'm really not a big breakfast person, Shan. <laughs> Jonathan. I'm going to need you to pay extra close attention to our first guest today because we're talking to Dr. Alma Nunez. She's an associate professor of finance at Tennessee Tech College of Business. Now, she's going to tell us all about a special partnership between the college and Wilson Bank and Trust for Financial Literacy Week, which obviously you need. That's taking place all this week with special events and programming on campus So you really might want to sign up for some of those events, Jonathan. I am reserving my spot as we speak. (laughs) We're also talking today with Tennessee Tech alumnus Myron Douglas, who's a health communications specialist at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta, Georgia. He's going to tell us all about being a public health official in a pandemic, his success in Atlanta, and his fond memories here in Tennessee's college town. And Shan, before we go any further, we should also acknowledge uh, we are recording today's episode amid some crazy weather here in Cookville, and your power went out, but the show must go on, so you're joining us by phone, and uh, if if your audio sounds a little bit different to, to folks who are listening, that would be why. Yes, absolutely. So bear with us, but we're still going to get this great interview to you. We have two wonderful guests. Well, I can't wait to hear from them both. Let's go ahead and kick things off with Tennessee Tech's very own Dr. Alma Nunez. Well, folks, you've heard of Susie Orman and Dave Ramsey, but today we're doing you one better by introducing you to Tennessee Tech's very own Dr. Alma Nunez. Dr. Nunez is an Associate Professor of Finance at Tennessee Tech's College of Business and the 2018 winner of Tech's Outstanding Faculty Award for Teaching. She's also been published in academic journals such as the Quarterly Review of Economics and Finance and the Journal of Economics and Finance Education. This makes me smart just saying this. I feel so intelligent, but that's not all. This week is Financial Literacy Week And Dr. Nunez is part of an exciting partnership between Tennessee Tech College of Business and Wilson Bank and Trust. And they're bringing financial literacy events and resources directly to Tech students. I love everything about this. She's going to tell us about this week's events, as well as give us a few financial literacy tips for our listeners and hopefully for myself. Dr. Nunez, Welcome to College Town Talk. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to share the work that my students have been doing for Financial Literacy Week. Now, Dr. Nunez, we're eager to talk about Financial Literacy Week, but first we've got to ask you about your journey to Tennessee Tech. Now, as I understand it, you did your schooling in Texas, but you've now been a proud Cookvillian for more than 10 years. So tell us, how did we get so lucky to have you right here in Tennessee's college town. So I earned my PhD in business administration from the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, which is nested deep, deep in South Texas. Um, given my alma mater's uh, closeness to the US-Mexico border, we specialized quite a bit in international business. And so my PhD is in business administration with an emphasis in finance, but my research is in international finance. So when Tennessee Tech was hiring now 12 years ago, um, I was very fortunate to be the selected candidate, and I've loved every one of my 11 years here. 
Well, I, I know that there are a lot of students and colleagues uh, of yours that would say they've loved these 11 years that you've served at, at Tennessee Tech as well. Let's talk about the great events and resources your team has pulled together for Financial Literacy Week with Wilson Bank and Trust. Uh, you know, I'm in Foundation Hall too, so I see the signs that you all have up and uh, the just the excitement in the building this week. You've had guest speakers, informational sessions, giveaways, a uh, trash get ball uh, and more and and the week isn't even over yet so what are some of the highlights of this week for you and what can you tell us about wilson bank and trust's role in making it all possible right so wilson bank and trust is our industry partner for an experiential class that i teach called the banking advisory board so in that class students work closely with a partner bank on a series of mutually beneficial projects and this year is the first time that we decided to develop programming around Financial Literacy Week. So the students have done a great job generating the content. Um, yesterday we had Trash to Ball. So we brought some basic financial literacy questions and some Trash to Ball to Foundation Hall. Um, students got a chance to earn prizes, learn a little bit. Today and Thursday we'll have um, guest speakers. And then on Wednesday we have a short blurb on learning about credit. And our hope is that students will walk away feeling a little more confident, knowing some credit basics, but also that it'll be at least a little fun. So we're giving away some Hot Wheels and giving them an opportunity to paint some wooden houses so they can buy their dream car or buy their dream house. Um, so it'll be a little lighthearted um, because credit is such an important and serious topic. But in terms of Wilson's uh, role, they've been a great partner, just phenomenal from helping us fine tune these activities to giving us ideas for how to run our marketing campaigns around these activities to the financial support, the speakers that we've had come from Wilson Bank. So just all the way around, they've been a really great partner and I'm very grateful to have them involved and, and I look forward to a continued coll collaboration. All right, now Dr. Nunez, this is such a timely and important information that you and your partners at Wilson Bank and Trust are offering to students, many of whom are learning for the first time about how to budget, build credit, plan for the future. These are questions that my daughter who goes to tech asks me on a regular basis. So for tech students who might be listening to this interview, what are a couple of your basic tips for things that they can do right now today to help build a stronger financial future? Wow, what a great question. So there are several things that I would recommend. Um, first, I would say that they should live within their means. And I know to some extent right now that might be imposed by lack of income, but as they get out and start earning higher income, they should be cognizant of that and remember to contribute to their savings on a regular basis. Something else that I would say that they should do is to learn about credit. So a lot of people are afraid of credit, but credit is just the tool. If it's used in the proper way, if you have the good, good information and you use it as a tool, it can really help you to um, achieve difficult tasks. So don't think of credit as scary. Don't overuse it for sure, um, but do learn more about it. And then the last thing that I would say, and this one is really, really important, especially for young people, is that the best thing that they can do to maximize their investment returns, so maximize how much money they make in the long run, is to increase their time horizon. So there's no substitute for time. So I would tell all those fresh graduates, I would tell my current students to start now. Even if you can't contribute a lot, whatever you can contribute to an investment account is going to pay off the longer you leave your money in there. So those would be my three tips. Live within your means, learn about credit, and maximize that time horizon. Now, many of us just heard a presentation from Dean Thomas Payne with the College of Business at the university's recent Board of Trustees meeting. Uh, and then again, I know he was speaking at the Cookville Putnam County Chamber of Commerce's Business Before Hours, and he shared some really exciting facts about the College of Business. Uh, I, I think are really a testament to uh, the students, but also faculty uh, such as yourself. For example, 92% of students in the college uh, are apparently employed in their major field or enrolled in graduate school when they graduate. 
and 90% of students engage in resume building experiential learning activities while they're in the college. Uh, so I know you were talking about the partnership with Wilson Bank and Trust. We've we've talked about some of the other uh, uh, industry partnerships on this program uh, that the College of Business has, like Jamie's Eats and Sweets and the Exceptional Bean. And to top it all off, Dean Payne also shared about the complete renovation of Johnson Hall that will soon be getting underway. So lots to brag about and look forward to in the College of Business. What does that all mean to you as an educator and someone who's been serving students in the college for so long? Well, it's really exciting, first of all. Um, so we, as you mentioned, we, we do a lot of work in the College of Business to bring students valuable learning experiences. We did it in the old Johnson Hall. We're doing it now in Foundation Hall. And of course, we hope to do it in a new space. But our students have been great. They They were with us you know, originally in Johnson, they've been great during this transition. And so it's just really exciting to know that we'll have the opportunity to continue to serve them in a space that will hopefully be really great and that we can all enjoy. And finally, Dr. Nunez, we like to end each and every interview with the same question. What is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? Just one, huh? Uh, I've got several, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you one on the professional side and one on the personal side. So from the professional side, Tennessee Tech has really given me the space and the support to become the faculty member that I thought I wanted to be when I graduated from grad school. And not only that, but to pivot along the way. So I've done a lot of different things while I've been here and I've gotten nothing but support from the College of Business. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, it's just such a great place to work. But then on a personal note, um, when I came here, I, I don't have any family here, so I'm not from Tennessee, right? But the university has um, given me a really good community. I have a lot of friends that feel like family spread all across campus. So, you know, shout out to my friends in the sciences and the arts. But um, it's just been great to live here. It feels like home. Um, it is home, even though, you know, originally home with South Texas. So I am very grateful for all of that. Thank you so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And for our listeners, you can learn more about the Tennessee Tech College of Business and Financial Literacy Week at tntech.edu slash business or by following the College of Business on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram using the handle tntechbusiness. Shan, it's 3 p.m. Do you know where your hall director from college is? I can't say that I do, Jonathan. Do you? As a matter of fact, I do because he's our next guest. Today, we're talking with Myron Douglas, a Tennessee Tech alumnus from the class of 2010, who now serves as a health communication specialist in the Radiation Studies Team at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, also known as the CDC, in Atlanta, Georgia. Through his work at the CDC, Myron has deployed to locations as diverse as the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Los Angeles, and Palau, which I had to look up, to lead emergency preparedness efforts and serve on the ground in the immediate aftermath of disasters and emergency events. Myron was named just last year to the Young Government Leaders Atlanta 40 Under 40 list. He's also a successful photographer and beyond his Tennessee Tech degree in interdisciplinary studies, holds a Master of Public Health. As a tech student, Myron was a member of the Omicron Phi chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, served in student government, and he was my hall director in Browning Evans Hall, which I really think should be the top line on your resume, Myron. Uh, Myron, welcome to College Town Talk. Hey, Jonathan, I am excited to be here. Uh, you definitely said a lot. I'm uh, wondering, like, who did he get all this information from? <laughs> hey, I am a, a good Googler. Oh, well, well, you did a great job. And yeah, we've... Uh, I've known you for almost 15 years now. Wow, we were young and now we are not young. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, young at heart, right? Yeah. Um, Myron, we, we wanna talk about your time at Tech and your memories here in Cookville, but we've gotta start with your work at the CDC. Your job is 
so fascinating to me. It's also, I think, very admirable because, you know, you are a, a public servant and you are often on the front lines of the agency's work to keep people safe. Uh, we should also tell our listeners that you've been at the CDC for a while, so you have the distinction of working at the CDC throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, which I'm sure has its own set of challenges and, and stories, you know, working in public health during a public health emergency. So tell us about your work at the CDC today and what you find most rewarding. Awesome. Sure thing. So CDC, we see ourselves as one CDC and one team. Um, and, you know, from there, you know, there's about, what, 14,000 plus people uh, that work in various different offices and institutions uh, there. So the work that I do, it, it sits within the National Center for Environmental Health, meaning that takes, so that brings us to how does our environment affect our health and what can we do to either mitigate things within ourselves or mitigate things within our environment. Uh, to make sure that we are living uh, a healthy life. So uh, from there, I'm a health communication specialist, just like you said. Um, and basically to make it simple, uh, I take the scientific information that our subject matter experts produce uh, and, and you know, distill that down into uh, like web content and physical products and meetings and presentations and just you know like all types all different types of products that can be used in many different ways just like you said uh you know like the cdc you know it feels like a desk job but it's definitely more than just a desk job um i've been able to um deploy uh, as part of the global ra global rapid response team um where basically what that is that uh like they they accept you based upon you know the expertise that you have so mine is communication uh you are a part of this team that uh can be de deployable for up to two months within a year uh and within those two months you have to be um ready to get on a plane or you know get to wherever the uh public health I I emergency is within 72 hours so two months out of the year, you know, like my schedule pretty much focuses on like, you know, being at home, you know, just doing things around, you know, like just around the house, uh, just in case I get that call to say, hey, you have to go to Puerto Rico or you have to go to the uh, Bur the Virgin Islands, for example, like I did in 2017. Um, and you may not know how long that you're going to be there because, you know, depending on the mission, whether it is a response mission or it's a recovery mission, um, your role, you know, may be, you know, you may be there for seven days or you may be there for a whole month or you may be there for more. So uh, I've gotten a chance to serve in, you know, short term deployments and more longer deployments to know like, hey, am I ever going to, am I ever going to go home? But yeah, so that's the work that I do. Um, but most importantly, my job gets to pull the different uh, aspects of m my life. Uh, you know, I'm a creative. Uh, I'm a photographer. You know, my love for uh, taking pictures, you know, started way back in tech. Uh, just, you know, with a little point two camera, um, you know, just going around taking pictures at different uh, e e events and stuff like that. Uh, to now where when I'm deployed, I'm also a a disaster photographer as well. So, you know, I'm, you know, capturing, you know, like everything that's on the ground at the moment. Um, I've gotten a chance to see some spectacular uh, scenes, uh, whether if they were, you know, like it was St. Croix uh, immediately after the hurricane 2017. Uh, where, you know, every, you know, there were no power lines that were up w whatsoever. So uh, just to be able to know that, you know, that we were there to, you know, report back and as well as, you know, advance our mission. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great thing. It's like, it's probably the most rewarding job I've had in my whole life just because it, you know, it, it takes in more than just my, uh, my profession as far as like how I was educated but you know the other skills that i have
Now, Myron, let's talk a little more about your work with the CDC, because your career has taken you to some faraway places, but not for a vacation. For example, you were deployed to the Virgin Islands in the immediate aftermath of Hurricane Irma and Maria in 2017. Now, that was at a time when much of the island lacked internet, television, or even electricity. That was uh, some dire times for you. I read that your team had to use the radio and the postal service to deliver messages. So you were going old school. What have you learned on these deployments and how would those experiences uh, shape you as a public health official? Sure thing. Um, mostly what I've learned uh, in the field is you have to be, um, you have to be adaptable. Um, once we got down to, you know, once we were boots on the ground in uh, St. Croix, um, we had no clue, you know, what we were walking into, except for just, you know, a little bit of situational awareness. Um, just like you said, you know, we had, you know, normally in our, uh, our planning for disasters and things like that, you know, we're saying, oh, we'll send out these, uh, send out these social me media messages. Uh, we have, uh, e email templates that we send out. So given the fact that nothing electronic was available uh we just had to pivot and you know just know that you know like there's still channels out there and they are available so just like you said we um we went to all of the radio stations that were running on generated power uh but people were still you know they still had their battery operated radio so they can get all the information that they need as well as um uh, going to the postal service because you know <laughs> I guess they should uh you know not only include um let's see rain sleet snow but also you know a ma massive storm that comes through too because they were still uh, operating uh we were able to get health and safety m messaging to about 50,000 people um from the from let's see in, in about four days of uh, getting on the ground, uh, understanding what the messaging need, needs were, and getting that out. And then once we got to that fourth day, uh, we were able to talk to people in the outreach that we did. And they were like, hey, uh, we got your flyer. This is what I'm doing. Or we got your flyer, and these are my questions. Uh, we were able to close that feedback loop fairly quick so we can, you know, uh, so that further informed, you know, what we were to do that. Well, Myron, I know you are missed by many people here in Cookville, but you've made a successful life for yourself now in Atlanta, Georgia. And in fact, as we uh, alluded to in the opening, you were named last year to Young Government Leaders Atlanta's 40 Under 40 list. And you know, that's a big deal. Let's be honest. Atlanta is a large city. There's a lot of competition for a spot on a list like that. Uh, how did it feel to you to earn that kind of recognition? Well, one, it uh, let me know that I'm closer to 40. <laughs> but most importantly, um, in those moments, I get to pause and, you know, take, in, uh, take, take it all in and just know that, like, w what I'm doing uh, is within the path for me like i'm on the right path um because my aim before going into college at tech uh was that i want to help people uh i'm not sure how, you know i wasn't sure how i was looking to do that but my goal for life is one to help people in you know any way that i can so at tech shoot i was um I was like, maybe I should go pre-med and, and go the pre-med route. Uh, the biology part, I loved it. The chemistry part, just just let me know. <laughs> this wasn't the, that, that wasn't the path for me. Uh, and then, you know, I stumbled upon, you know, uh, biology and nursing. Uh, and then, you know, that allowed me to, you know, walk into public health. So, um, and then, so I just, basically, I just do the work. You know, like I do what is what is given to me, uh, you know, what I'm inspired to do. Uh, and then when it, like when those moments get to pop up, I'm, you know, appreciative, very grateful because that gives me a, a moment to say, you know, yeah, I am doing a great job and I am on the right track. So and then that 
moves you to like, okay, well, let's, you know, get back down into it and and push the ball for, forward. So yeah, I get a chance to pause and just say, hey, you know, you are doing a good job. So let's keep going. Myron, we always end each interview by asking our guests about how Tennessee Tech impacted their lives. But before we do that, I want to ask you about a specific aspect of your Tennessee Tech experience. Now, during your time here as a student, you were deeply involved with the Omicron Psi chapter of the Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity, which is such a rich part of Tech's history. That was a lot of Greek letters. Alpha Phi Alpha is known for, among other things, leading the annual silent march on campus for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And in fact, it's my understanding that Martin Luther King Jr. was an Alpha Phi Alpha, along with other leaders like Thurgood Marshall and W.E.B. Du Bois. You previously called being part of Alpha Phi Alpha at Tennessee Tech one of the best decisions you ever made. Now, what was it about your experience in the fraternity that was so meaningful for you? Most definitely. Uh, well, to start, um, the aims of the fraternity, um, you know, drew me into, you know, like, to be a part of, you know, such a dynamic group uh, of men. Uh, the aims are mainly the scholarship and love for all mankind. Uh, so that just resonates with me so well because, you know, I'm such a person that that's uh, of service and then just to be on campus uh, and, you know, just to be, a, to be amongst a group of leaders, of advocates, of, uh, uh, of people who are just, you know, like are, you know, pushing the ball forward in their respective, um, their respective majors. Um, so being able to be a part of that and, you know, just the, the fun a aspect of it, but, you know, we were also led by service. So we were, you know, in the community, uh, like within tech, you know, outside of the, the borders of tech, uh, into Cookville, uh, we got a chance to do a lot of great work. Um, so, and then while I while I was a part while I was part of the uh, chapter there at Tech, um, I got a chance to you know step into some leadership roles and exercise you know like what makes Myron a leader, uh, what are my capabilities, where do I lag, um, and what are the things I need to succeed and move forward. So yes, um, we and we had a great time, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, college is about you know getting in and getting out. Uh, but you know, uh, my brothers, they definitely, uh, they definitely took time to uh, enjoy, you know, the fruits of our labors. Whether that was a, uh, we were doing scholarship uh, pageants, we were um, hosting the annual step show on campus. Uh, we had a great time. So. So uh, I'm, you know, I'm pretty excited to be amongst a uh, a list of uh, of scholars and leaders, and I would, you know, I would be beside myself if I didn't give a shout out to the uh, Omicron Phi chapter. Um, so. Yes. Well, when when we talk about scholars and leaders uh, at Tennessee Tech, you are, are certainly high on that list. Uh, I, I love hearing that story. So now I, I kind of want to go big picture with this final question, because like I said, we, we always end each interview uh, by asking this same question. What is one way that Tennessee Tech impacted your life? Tennessee Tech impacted my life because it taught me the power of the pivot. Um, and I say that because, um, as you read it previously, um, I have a, a bachelor's degree in biology and nursing, um, and I do not work, uh, you know, in the biology field or in the nursing field to this day. Um, you know, and, and those were, you know, those were places where I thought, you know, like that I can do the most good. I can help people. Um, but, you know, like things change, you know, once I left and, you know, I was able to, you know, like figure out, you know, like what that passion was and my passion I found was public health. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, says, uh, take the first step and take the first step in faith. Uh, you won't see the whole staircase, but, but take the first step. Um, after leaving tech, I just, did not know like, you know, what, you know, what was life like outside of tech because, you know, um, Cookville 
and Timothy Peck and, you know, and uh, my fraternity and res life and uh, nursing and biology, they were all my world. Um, but, you know, I, I had to ask myself, what's next for you? Like, how are you gonna, you know, push yourself uh, closer to your mission of helping people? Uh, I stumbled upon public health and ever since then, you know, going through and getting my master's and then uh, working my dream job at the CDC, um, it has made the most difference in my life. I've seen so much more of the world and, you know, uh, done a lot of great things, um, you know, either, you know, on my own or as a collective uh, within the work that I do uh, that I never dreamed possible. Uh, I never even fathomed that, you know, that I would be in Palau, which is this small island in the Pacific, you know, that maybe 20 or 30 minutes, you know, driving from one end to the other, uh, you know, giving a talk on uh, emergency preparedness or uh, presenting at conferences or, you know, like getting the awards and things that I've gotten. So, uh, understanding that the power of the pivot, making sure that you are flexible and adaptable to whatever comes your way, uh, that made the most difference in my life and it continues to make the most difference in my life. So yeah, like I owe tech a huge thing because had I just, you know, kept myself in the box, I don't know where I'd be. I love that. The power of the pivot. That is, uh, that's just a great word for our listeners. Uh, Myron, thanks so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. Thank you so much. We learned so much from Dr. Alma Nunez and Myron Douglas today. We want to thank them for being our guests on College Town Talk. And thanks to all of you for listening. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave us a review, and share this podcast with your friends. It all helps to spread the word about the great things happening right here in Cookville. And we'll meet you back right here again next week for more conversations with the people who make Cookville Tennessee's college town. College Town Talk is presented by Tennessee Tech University in partnership with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Your hosts are Jonathan Frank and Shan Stout, and original music is performed by Andrew Buckner. Visit us online at tntech.edu slash collegetowntalk. <laughs>